Okay, I'm going to start talking about uh, electric diagrams for HVAC. And so we've got to start out with uh, symbols. You need to know what each thing means. I'm going to go over each one of these. There's quite a number of them. And tell you what they do, what they mean, so on. Okay, this top one is just a single pole, single throw, normally open switch. Now that's a control switch. It's manually operated. There's nothing that, that moves it except someone wants to turn it on. That's all it is. Now here's a single pull, single throw switch that is normally closed. It would be assumed that it would normally be in a closed position. Okay, the next one down is a double pull, single throw, normally open. Okay, there's two poles. One pole here, one pole there. There's a single throw, because it can only go one way. But the dotted line tells me they're hooked together. So if I turn one on, the other one goes off. Okay, now here's a single pole double throw. And it's switched on somewhere all the time. It's going to power through here. When it's in this position, when it changes position, no power goes through here. It only goes through here. So single pole, double throw. Still all manual switches. Now here's a double pole, double throw. And it's really just this switch up here but with double poles. So when this one moves, then this one moves and changes position. Now here's an alternate way of making a single pole double throw switch. Now any of the configurations up here could be this way. This is normally a set of contacts rather than a manually operated switch, but it can be either way. When I have these two contacts like this that are open, that means there's no continuity through there in the normal position. By the way, normal means power off and nothing's happening. Okay, if there's a diagonal line across the switch, that means it's normally closed. So in this uh, case here, when it's in this position, power would pass through here, would not pass through here. If I change position of the switch, then this would be closed and that would be open. Okay, now we're going to have switches that are actually operated by something. At the very top one here, this would be a normally closed circuit breaker. So that if there's an overload, this one would pop open. This is a heating thermostat. Now this is an operating thermostat because it's shown in the open position. Uh, as I go through these things, I'm telling you how most diagrams are set up. I would not guarantee every diagram is going to be the same. Uh, they would be nice if it was the same, but they're not. You're just going to have to tough out some of these things because they have different designation sometimes. But these are just general ones. They're usually fairly close. Anyway, if it's got this little squiggle on it, it is operated by temperature. It's a heating thermostat. It opens at a rise in temperature. Okay, here's a cooling thermostat. Same little doohickey on it, but it opens on a drop in temperature. Okay. Now, this is a limit switch right here. And a limit switch is shown normally closed, usually, because normally it would be closed. If there's an over temperature situation, this will open. Okay. The next one, with this little doohickey, this bell thingy on it, that is a pressure switch. Now, in this case, this would be a safety switch as this limit switch was because it's shown normally closed. Pressure switch opens on a rise in pressure. If there was too much pressure, then this uh, would open and open a circuit. Okay, this is a pressure switch that opens on a drop in pressure. Again, it's, it's some sort of safety device because it is shown normally closed. And if the pressure drops too low, it opens a circuit. Now, if this was an operating control, it would be shown open. But these are safeties. 
Okay, this here is an operating control. It's a humidistat. Now, humidistats are fairly simple little beasts. Uh, they're designated by that little square down there. And so it opens on a rise in humidity. Okay, here's another little kind of oddball switch. This is a timer switch. The two little leg thingies on there mean it's a timer. And this one, it's shown normally open, so it probably closes on a time delay. So that if something needed to start up, then it would delay, you know, several minutes, whatever, seconds, whatever, before it closes. Okay, this one's for a heater, an electric heater. This one here is for some kind of light. The color of the light will usually be printed in the center. See if it's a red light, it'd be R or something like that. So that would be a light. A solenoid looks very much like a heater, except it's shorter. Uh, with just one uh, squiggle on it. And they make these in various ways. They're not always done just this way. Here's an alternate type of solenoid. Sometimes is done just a square box. You have to figure out what these are by their context in the diagram. Okay, here's a second alternate solenoid uh, with just a circle in it. Okay, now I'm showing a single pole contactor here, which is showing a set of normally open contacts that would close when this solenoid energizes. Now, certainly you could have the solenoid uh, symbol down here in place of this but in this case I just put it in there like that okay here we have some more types of symbols now this is a transformer and this is the core of the transformer the iron core so let's say I had 120 volts coming in to this coil and it was set up to put 24 out a lot of times they'll mark them 120, 24. But that's a transformer. Okay, the next one is a type of overload, heat operated overload, oftentimes used in conjunction with a contactor. Okay, this is, I put a couple of motors in here. There are other motors, uh, and there are many ways of making motor uh, designations, but this is a fairly common one. This top one is a split phase motor. It's got a run winding that connects with common and it's got a start winding that connects with common. So that'd be used single phase systems. This one down here is a three phase and that's the way three phase is generally wired. Uh, same three terminals, just identical windings in it. So that's a few of the uh, symbols. I probably have forgotten a bunch of them, but uh, I am going to start doing a few uh, simple diagrams here to try to give you an idea of how to read these things. Because reading these diagrams is by far the most important thing you'll do in this industry. So uh, that's a set of symbols.